a local man who had premises in the marketplace, which was the bookshop. Um, it's something recently closed, Westbury Books. But that was his premises, and um, he had this house built in 1900. You can see from the dates there. Okay, well, um, we're looking at the offices of Pinnegar Finch, which from the signboard established 1819 and with their actual their account books survive and we have them in the history centre they're the account books that Henry Pinnegar kept um, when he set up business here he took a lease on this property where he was where the firm has always been and in a renewing lease of 1824 that that lease this was part again of that manner of Westbury Chantry and the renewing lease in 1824 had a very interesting covenant in it whereby when the precentor, the, the, the ecclesiastical figure who held the manor, who was lord of the manor of Westbury uh, Chantry, when he needed to come up from Salisbury to hold court, his court, his manor court, Mr. Pinnegar had to make over to him um, the right to use the hall, the parlour, the best chamber and the sleeping room for himself and four servants, together with stabling for horses. So when he came up to hold his manor court, which may have been a couple of times a year, Pinnegar had to then sort of make accommodation available for him or his steward. And in fact, on the front, on the other side of the building, facing the church, which I'm sure you've all seen, um, there's a very, very old medieval part of the building. There's that medieval window, um, and it's probably one of the earliest um, surviving um, lay buildings um, in, in Westbury. Um, called by the, firm, by the firm known as the chapel room but I think rather than being a chapel room I think it was the courtroom where the court was held and it, it's perhaps slightly com confusing or difficult to comprehend as well as holding the manor court and in the manor court the business of admitting tenants to properties and arranging and organising that everything was run smoothly between the tenants so that the ditches were kept clean houses and properties were maintained that sort of nitty-gritty of, of running a manor which was not as we think today just an, a single building it was a, an area of land uh, an estate the precentor also had um, an ecclesiastical jurisdiction over Westbury um, this may not come as a surprise to some of you, but Westbury was what was known as a peculiar parish. Um, <laughs> peculiar only, I hasten to add, in that it was exempt from the jurisdiction of the Bishop of Salisbury. Um, it was run ecclesiastically by the precentor and his superior, the dean. So in the 19th century and earlier, that meant that if you died in Westbury and you left a will or you wanted to have a, a, a your estate administered, you had your will proved in the court of the precentor. So in that courtroom again, the, the, the courtroom in the old building there, people would go to have their wills proved. Um, it held court there where the church had the authority to investigate into um, the moral behaviour of the parishioners. Um, you could be presented at the church court for living um, out of wedlock, having a child out of wedlock, and all sorts of um, beliefs and ideas and practices which today we, you know, we, we regard as entirely a matter of private individual choice were regulated by the authorities and so the, the presenter's court had that role and duty as well and of course it was quite close to the church the, that's one of the reasons why I think it's then less likely that it would have been a chapel because you had access and use of the church as well it's, I'm sure it was the courtroom so um, Pinnegar then would make, it, make the place available for him as and when. We know from other, re other records that the buildings here was a pub. There was a public house called the King's Head. It subsequently reconverted into private ownership. And from um, the Manor Court book for the Chantry, Westbury Chantry Manor in the 1650s, um, although it's not possible to pinpoint exactly where it was, there was a public house here called the Phoenix. It's somewhere in this uh, vicinity, but we don't, maybe on the same site as what subsequently became the King's Head. Um, public houses often have a, you know, a tradition of, of you know, um, changing sign names, but, but being you know, a, a history of continual use on one site, so possibly the haunted. <laughs>